This is the Nebraska Women's Basketball Show with head coach Amy Williams. Sports Nightly is presented by the NDOT Highway Safety Office, who reminds you to buckle up and put the phone down. Strom moving left to right at the head of the key, gives to Franklin, who moves right to left, spins around Ooh. Widener, and Widener blocks it. Big time block for Allison Widener. Ooh. That is filthy right there by Allison Widener. At top board, high lob underneath for Mendelssohn, catches it, and she scores off the assist for Izzy Moore. I'll tell you what, she is making immediate impact. Markowski, Shelly, and Moriarty, Huskers lead by one, just under two minutes to go in the third. Heidi down the right lane line, challenges and scores. Put it up over Hatsa Leonti. Shelly to throw it in baseline left, into Markowski, back to Jazz, three pointers in, betcha! Deep left corner off the screen assist from Markowski. Ford series for Nebraska. Hivey around a Mendelssohn screen. Deep right side, Izzy Ford three. Yeah! Betcha! That's a Central Valley A three from Izzy Ford off the assist from Hivey. Stand up, Husker fans. This is a great win for Nebraska. They knock off previously undefeated Kansas. Their second win over a top 20 team this year. And the Huskers in three overtimes defeat Kansas 85 to 79 tonight in Lincoln. Here is your host, Matt Coveney, on the Huskers Radio Network. And good evening and welcome to the Nebraska Women's Basketball Radio Show. I'm Matt Coatney and this is Hour 1 of Sports Nightly and it's all Husker basketball. Tonight, Amy Williams is across the table from me and we'll talk Husker Women's Basketball here in Hour 1. We'll take your calls and your text at 402-413-2400. Hour 2, Fred Hoiberg, the coach of the men. We'll be sitting where Amy is and uh, we will have the, the Fred Hoiberg Show and you can uh, talk or text Coach Hoiberg in hour number two. Again, the number is 402-413-2400. And special treat for you tonight. Uh, I have tickets to give away to Nebraska women's game against Penn State next Wednesday, January the 11th. Four tickets. We'll have a trivia question later in the show that you will have a chance to get on your personal text machine and, and come in here. Now, Amy Williams, your text machine, I've never seen a coach in the modern era who isn't either on their phone texting, looking, or talking on it. How important is your phone as a head coach in the year 2023? Texting especially. Uh incredibly important and um and i text a lot but my coaching staff is always on me because they're you know I, on you I, because i don't i don't snap and they said that's where i really need to get um, your snap game's not good then. yeah i don't i don't i don't even really know how to get into snapchat and you know so i've got to i got to up my game there matt with with two daughters yes. I, know. You're, you're, I know what Kennedy always tries to say uh, mom I sent you she'll text me and say I sent you a snap I'm like just text me <laughs> what you were snapping then I don't get it oh my goodness <laughs> I I'm, I'm I'm stunned the things I learn about yeah. you 402 413 2400 if you like to text the coach or call in on our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline Nebraska has a road game at the Rutgers. Scarlet Knights coming up uh, this Saturday right here on the Huskers Radio Network. We will be with you at 1 o'clock Central, and then they return home for two games. Penn State, as I said, next Wednesday will be the first of, of two games. Boy, you have just been running the gauntlet. I think right before the holiday break, you knocked off number 20 Kansas in a wild triple overtime game, and then you took on 14th rank Michigan before... You headed on the road to take on number four, Indiana. Um, did you talk to the Big Ten office and say, hey, just load up, you know, what you could do for me after we played our final non-conference game? Because they, they certainly did that for you, didn't they? It's been a crazy stretch. But tr- truth is, Matt, um, the Big Ten, it's crazy. And they're, every single night, it doesn't even really matter what schedule they would have given us. It, you know, coming back after Christmas, it was going to be, you know, tough challenges. And, and so uh, we know that that's, that's why we tried to really challenge ourselves with a um, very challenging non-conference schedule this year is to put us in the position to, uh, to be able to be ready to try to um, compete in those types of games. 
402-413-2400 is our Sports Nightly Hotline. It's brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. With 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned, you can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. Our first caller into the Nebraska Women's Basketball Radio Show is up in Saunders County. Let's go to Wahoo and talk to Rob. Good evening, Rob. You're on with Coach Williams. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I got a couple questions for the coach. Could uh, Ellison Weiner get a medical red shirt next, this year? And the second question is about the players next year. Uh, the one from Incarnate Word Ward in St. Louis, they have a 75-game win streak, and they're the number one team in the nation, I, I believe. Uh, could you talk about her and the other young lady from North Dakota is a two-time player of the year. And uh, they, she also had a big win streak last year but lost in the state finals. And I was just kind of wondering, do you, does the coach or the coaches go to any of their games? And could you talk about them a little bit? And then I'll hang up and listen. Yeah, thanks so much for the call, Rob. Um, yeah, the, the rule for a medical redshirt year is you have to play in – less than 30% of your team's games in order to qualify in that, um, in that case. So uh, we believe Allison to be just slightly over that mark. And so uh, it's, it's not likely that she'll be able to qualify for a medical red shirt from this year, um, which is um, sure disappointing, but um, you know, we're looking forward to having her back and healthy next year. And um, to comment on the two young ladies that we signed in the early signing period, I'm thrilled to talk about them because, um, as you mentioned, Rob, they're just both winners, and that's one of the best things we like about them. I mean, um, Natalie Potts down at Incarnate Word High School, she's got just an incredible motor, just plays hard all the time, um, just long, lanky, will play the top of a press, you know, just get more deflections than any kid that I've probably ever um, seen or recruited or coached and, you know, just very active and um, plays with a motor and, and um, sure wish that the coaches would have got to go see her uh, right before Christmas break because that number one team in the nation got to travel to Hawaii for uh, <laughs> a, a Christmas, uh, pre-Christmas kind of tournament, um, high school tournament that, that she played in. But she plays a lot of high-level basketball and has been very successful. And um, Logan Nisley also, yes, um, incredibly successful um, both Gatorade um, Player of the Year in volleyball and basketball, and, you know, just a tremendous athlete up in that state, but um, knows how to win and um, an incredible competitor as well. And so we're very excited to be adding both of those two young ladies into our program. Rob, we appreciate the phone call. Rob had asked, do your coaches get a chance, once someone has committed, someone has signed, um, to go see them play? What's kind of... And not necessarily you, but you could talk about your philosophy. But generally, uh, on the major Division One level, if a if a player has committed, do you still go and watch their high school games, or do you do them at a level if you're trying to recruit them? What's how do you kind of look at that? Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you, we've communicated with both of those young ladies that our priority on days off where we are not um, actually playing games or coaching ourselves is to be recruiting outstanding teammates to play with them right. yeah. <laughs> uh, but we do want to and try to get to um, uh, their games to support them whenever it feasibly works into our schedule to do so and and so um, you know but last night you know Logan's game was aired on Midco you know it's something that you know we try to watch any um, type of streams or get any type of you know game film that we can and and be tuned in to kind of what they're doing as much as we possibly can even when we're traveling or on the road or you know with our own team but uh, we hope it works out that we'll be able to actually be in person to see both of those kids play um, this year yet. Rob great questions we appreciate it 402-413-2400 we'll take your text tonight also in addition to your phone calls our Husker Radio Network Broadcast Center is sponsored by Acres the Midwest premier John Deere dealer supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres Solutions for every field. Huskers are coming off uh, just a tough, tough game, a loss in overtime at fourth-ranked Indiana, 74-62, New Year's Day, nationally televised 
on ESPN. Ah, gosh, I just thought you were going to get it done there in regulation. I, I was thinking to myself on that final play where you, you had the timeout, you set up the play. I thought if, if Nebraska scores here, I think they, they can win this. But, I, man, I thought, man, I don't want to go to overtime. You know, I've heard a lot of theories through the years about play to win on the road in regulation, play to go overtime at home. Do you believe in any of that? Is every game a little bit different? Or, or what were you thinking there against Indiana? Well, for sure. I mean, in that situation, there wasn't a lot to think about. It was a tie ball game. Um, so we're going for the win. I mean, I get it. If we were down two, should we go for two? Should we go for right. three? Do we go, you know, I think, um, you know, every game warrants, you know, different philosophy yeah. on that. But um, I'm usually a let's go for it. Let's try to go get a win, um, yeah. girl. But um, you know, in that situation, it was a tie ball game. Um, we 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 were going to obviously play for last shot. I think our timing was just a little bit off, and um, we went a little too early on the action and activity that we wanted. So it kind of stunted us, and we didn't get we didn't get to the hole as aggressively as we wanted to on that last play. But uh, but certainly we were going for a last shot, playing for a last shot, um, hoping to win it in regulation. What happened in overtime? It was just Huskers couldn't get anything going. Indiana outscored you 12 nothing. It kind of seemed like after the first minute and a half, it kind of got away from you. What What do you think happened in overtime there? Yeah, I mean, I don't. I think that they took a little bit of the wind out of our sails by, um, uh, you know, knocking down that big three to open up in overtime. We had a little miscommunication on the coverages um, there and um, gave up a open look. For to Sid Paris, she knocked it down. I think kind of took a little bit of the wind out of our sails, and and um, and you know they clamped down and they fed off their crowd, and and um, they they were really tough defensively in the overtime period. It's got to make you feel good that your team held Indiana to just four out of sixteen from beyond the arc, and and two of those were very very late in the game. And I thought defensively Nebraska was was pretty good I, after the Michigan game. You know, it was kind of tough because you were just coming off of Widener's injury and really trying to find a way to play without her. I got to be honest with you. I thought your team played extraordinarily well against Indiana without Allison Widener. How much of an adjustment has it been, you know, trying to have a practice, uh, rotations, minutes, different lineups, different sets, who throws the ball in at times. How much of it has an adjustment has been since Allison went out? You know, um, Matt, it's it's tough to adjust. It's been um, a significant adjustment, um, not just, you know, with Allison out, but, you know, when we lost Trinity Brady, we had to make an adjustment. When we lost Allison, um, there's adjustments every team in the country is having to adjust to losing some players to injury and, and things like that. That happens. Um, the unique thing about our situation is we're simultaneously trying to work players into our rotation that have not been um, consistently in practice or in um, game minutes. And so you're working through some things that maybe you normally would be working through in games one, two, and three with, with um, you know, certain players and then, um, you know, trying to adjust to, you know, other players kind of moving out. And so um, it's a little bit of a unique situation for us, but I feel uh, really blessed that um, as we're as we're working through some of those losses to injury, we are also having some some really good uh, energy coming back into the team just now trying to find a way to work all that and mesh it together. It's almost like you've had two different teams this year because back in the preseason, um, you had Trinity Brady moved in the starting lineup when it looked like Sam might be out for the year, and she's starting with Allison Widener. Now 40% of that starting lineup is out now and you've got Sam back and you brought in Maggie Mendelson. So, you know, you've got a dynamic of Mendelson and Hybe, no Brady and, and Widener and at the start of the year, no Hybe and no Mendelson. So did do you kind of feel like maybe you've had a couple of different teams this year? Yeah, I mean there's just some unique dynamics there that um are are a little bit um different than what you normally see, but but most certainly we feel uh, really blessed and grateful to have. Um, that's a really good problem to have, to be working Sam Hybe and, and Maggie Mendelson back into the rotation. I think they're just getting stronger and stronger and more confident and more comfortable and, um, you know, showing what they can do and bring to the table, and that's, um, that's helping. 
I was uh, amazed that Sam played as well as he did in the in the win over Kansas in triple overtime. He had to play her, you know, a lot more minutes than she had been playing. And then starts against Indiana, ten points, five rebounds in twenty five minutes. I don't think Sam is um, the Sam of a couple of years ago, but you know, whatever percentage she is right now, that's still pretty good, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, she definitely there's. There's such a calming um, presence with our team when Sam's on the floor, and and you know she just um, understands pace and and things some things just you know that you can't really teach. It's hard to you know after you know five years in the program, she just innately kind of has, and that um, that's uh, all the stuff that we benefit from having her on the floor. And I think um, each. Each practice, each game, you know, we're seeing her gain some of her confidence um, back to uh, getting back to um, to what we all know Sam can do. That's Amy Williams. I'm Matt Coatney. You want to give away some tickets? Let's do it. So Jeff Grease emailed me late this afternoon and said, you need to give away some tickets. So yeah. this is what we're going to do, a ticket giveaway. Just a simple question. And if you have the answer to this, text us on our Woodhouse Auto family. Text line 402 413 2400. 402 413 2400. And if you know the answer, Amy, you can't text because people are going <laughs> to think that's my, unfair. Yeah, let me get my phone out. Yeah, well, <laughs> okay. Well, no, at least, I, well, I knew for you we couldn't do snaps yet, so I didn't say yeah. snap it to me. <laughs> yeah. So here we go. Huskers are getting ready to play at Rutgers on Saturday at 1 o'clock Central, which Husker posted a double double last season against Rutgers. 402-413-2400. Text only. The first texter with the correct answer picks up four tickets to Nebraska's home game with Penn State on Wednesday, January the 11th. Which Husker posted a double-double last season against Rutgers? 402-413-2400. With your text, we'll have hopefully a winner. But we return to the Nebraska Women's Basketball Radio Show in a few moments. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Sam Pineda with Campus News. Husker students on the debate team and Bateman competition public relations team earned national championships this past year, marking a first for each program. The debate team claimed victory with one of the youngest teams in the country, while the Bateman competition public relations team won their championship by building a PR campaign for the Lymphoma Research Foundation. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. Visit shelterinsurance.com and find an agent to help you choose the coverage you need. Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We're your shelter. Woodhouse Nissan makes car buying easy, enjoyable, and stress-free. We will bring the dealership to your driveway with Nissan at home. You can shop, drive, and buy a new or pre-owned Nissan all from the comfort of your own home. Explore every aspect of the purchasing process at your pace and convenience. Get real pricing on your vehicle of choice, review lease and financing options, and complete a credit application. Get to your next adventure faster with Woodhouse Nissan. Families who travel to Nebraska's only Ronald McDonald House are facing extremely uncomfortable situations. Their child is sick in an unfamiliar city, unsure of how to handle it all. But when they walk in the Ronald McDonald House, they can find comfort in the little things. A quiet moment away from the bombardment of beeps and buzzes in a hospital room. The taste of a home-cooked meal. A calming voice saying it'll be okay. Help us provide the little things that make a big difference. Support a one-night stay for a family in need by visiting rmhcomaha.org slash huskers. Touchdown, Nebraska! If you're doing business in Nebraska, the best way to connect your organization with the excitement surrounding the Huskers is through a partnership with Nebraska Athletics. You can take your business to the next level by reaching loyal Husker fans through in-venue signage, digital and social media, radio advertising, and more. Got it! Join the Husker team today and email partners at huskers.com to learn more about opportunities to connect with Husker Nation. That's partners at huskers.com. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. 
Every single day, Central Valley Ag works with our farmers to feed the globe. When you raise food corn for CVA, you can earn an additional $25,000 per quarter section. That's $100,000 more profit for every four quarters you farm. Do the same work, raise more profit. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Learn how you can get up to a $5,000 signing bonus with a value-added grain contract at cvacoop.com. Central Valley A, the official co-op of Husker Nation. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska is proud to support Husker Athletics. Having a competent teammate beside you makes all the difference when it comes to protecting what matters most. With the proven track record of dependable coverage, unmatched financial strength, and a prompt claim service team right here in Nebraska, that's insurance kept local. Visit FMNE.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Bank of the West is offering the first checking account designed for climate action. It gives back 1% of the account's net revenue to the planet at no cost to you shows you the estimated carbon impact of debit card purchases and there's no minimum balance required learn more at bankofthewest.com slash one percent additional conditions apply member fdic agriculture is the economic engine of the midwest at acres equipment we dedicate ourselves to making that engine run smoothly we supply our farmers and ranchers with quality John Deere equipment, parts, and service. We also deliver the most advanced technology and precision ag strategies to help them farm today and for the future. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Hey friends, Nebraska 811 says go dig red before you dig. Always call or click 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free, it's easy, it's a law. Matt Coatney back with you with Coach Amy Williams on the Nebraska Women's Basketball Radio Show. And if you were with us before the break, you know we ask a trivia question with four tickets for you on the line for the Nebraska versus Penn State game at Pinnacle Bank Arena next Wednesday, January the 11th. The question was, which Husker posted a double-double last season against Rutgers? The question was germane because Nebraska is going to Rutgers on Saturday. We had a lot of people guess, and a lot of people were wrong. <laughs> a couple of people were right. The first correct answer was from Carla. Carla, congratulations. You said Alexis Markowski. Alexis Markowski had 16 points and 15 rebounds against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights last year. So Carla will be uh, going to the Nebraska women's basketball game against Penn State on Wednesday at PBA with four tickets. Those of you, uh, including Art in Los Angeles, who thinks he won, <laughs> but Art, you, you, weren't, you, you, just, you didn't beat Carla, though. He was one minute late. One but he minute. does say Happy New Year. <laughs> Thank you very much. And uh, our producer will, uh, I think, has given Carla information on how to pick up those tickets. Uh, Rutgers on Saturday in New Jersey. This is Coquise Washington's first year with the Rutgers program. Uh, no C. Vivian Stringer who has retired. Does it seem strange to you to be playing Rutgers and Coach Stringer not being involved with that program? 
Yeah, it's such a unique situation because obviously, um, Coquise, I have a ton of respect for her and um, what she's done as a coach in the Big Ten Conference and some familiarity with her as a head coach. But to watch her doing that um, at Rut on Rutgers sideline and then, um, it, you know, no, no C Viv, you know, she's just been such a staple in women's basketball and, and um, just an incredible um, uh leader uh, for our sport and so um, it's been fun to watch they've had lots of time to really celebrate her now that she's not um, actually active on the sideline and and um, so it's a unique situation they have a lot of new players and new head coach so the preparation is is quite different 402-413-2400 if you'd like to Call or text the program on our Woodhouse Auto Family Hotline. The Sports Nightly Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime. With 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned, you can always find what you are looking for with Woodhouse. Speaking of Rutgers, speaking of Coquies, Washington, it used to be when you thought of Rutgers, you thought of C. Vivian Stringer, pressure defense, the 55 uh, maybe not a lot of offense. Maybe you hope to win 42 to 41, something like that. But Coquise Washington, former coach at Penn State, uh, got a law degree, played for the Houston Comets under Van Chancellor, won some WNBA titles. Um, you know, she's got a great history in women's basketball. How different is this Rutgers team that Coquise Washington is putting her stamp on now? Yeah, I mean, um, they're different. Uh, their roster is different. They have a few players returning, but um, they still are very aggressive defensively, and uh, they may not be running that full court 55, but um, the way they mix their defenses and kind of change things up, and they're long and athletic and um, do a great job of just, uh, you know, buying in. I think, you know, they have eight players active on their roster, and those eight players know exactly what is expected of them and where their rotation coming and where their time is coming where their minutes are coming and uh, they just really seem to be on the same page and kind of and and all bought into uh, Coquise and and what she's what her vision for the program is uh, let's take a look and see what we have here on our text line uh, Brian from Johnson says hi Matt and coach Amy hope you both had a great Christmas and New Year Matt you're an awesome commentator coach Amy you're an incredible coach and well, I lost the I lost the text here, so I'll try and get back to that. Um, oh, there we go. Nope, nope. It's uh, so. Here's this thing. My my text machine. I just updated before we started the show here today. Uh, Brian, we appreciate you reaching out on the show. Let me get back a little bit to um, talking about records. You've got. I don't know if you call it an off week this week. You don't have a midweek game. You had a Sunday game. And then you've got a Saturday game, so really no midweek game coming off uh, the game against Kansas right before the Christmas break and then having to quickly play Michigan and then go to, to Indiana. So how have you approached this week with no midweek game? Yeah, it's been um, just perfect timing for this, just an opportunity to really kind of um, do – uh, a little bit of focus on us and not everything is having to prep for another opponent and I think um, these last two ball games have taught us some things that we know we need to get uh, better at if we want to um, accomplish our goals in the Big Ten Conference and so um, we have utilized you know yesterday's practice was just fully uh, working on some of the things that we feel like um, are most important for us to get better at right now and then um, providing just a little opportunity to to kind of have an extra day off this week to recover our kids bodies and and stay fresh for a long season well I don't know what you've been doing in practice with Cal and Hake but I've been impressed with her um, the last couple of games I remember Kelsey Griffin telling me when she got to the WNBA how important point production was when you get in the league because she says, I remember being in college, you know, winning the game was tantamount no matter how you did it. If you got no points but you got 10 rebounds, you know, that was a good thing. But, you know, they really take a look at, you know, are you producing points in the pros? And, you know, not, not that points are, are everything, but with Widener out of the lineup, Callan Hake has kind of stepped up and replaced some of those points that, that Al was giving you. 
Uh, career high 11 against Michigan, 10 big points against Indiana. And if her feet were a little smaller and wouldn't have been out of bounds on that one three, she would have had 13. But have you noticed a change in her? Um, is it that you know she's just getting more experience, or uh, has she earned some of that playing time? But just what is what's going on now with Callan Hake? Yeah, she's playing with great confidence right now, which is awesome to see, you know. And and I remember sitting down with Callan kind of early in the year and just talking about, uh, you know, sometimes it takes till about Thanksgiving, and sometimes it takes about Thanksgiving or so for um, for freshmen that are coming in to kind of really get comfortable, um, where it feels like the game is starting to kind of slow down and they're getting their legs under them and they kind of know and understand where opportunities are going to come and um, she's really taken to heart the fact that we knew we were going to need some people to step up with with Allison out of the lineup and um, I think she's taken that to heart she's playing with great confidence um, she has an ability to create a shot for herself and for other people and um, and that really has paid off and she's she's played well in those last couple games for sure you know sometimes and I don't know if fans run into this but I start kind of slotting players about what their role is early on in their career. Uh, and I looked up the other afternoon when we were in Indiana, and uh, you've got four of your five starters on the floor in the final minute with Callan. And I thought, you know, uh, a month ago, I wouldn't have believed this, but the moment wasn't too big for her. In fact, she had earned that playing time in there. Um, sometimes you just have to put somebody in there to see if, if the moment is too big for them. I mean, as, as a coach, when do you become confident, you know, that somebody can be in there in a real game situation? I mean, obviously, we as coaches are always um, valuing what we're seeing every day in practice and what they're bringing every day in practice. And are they showing that in, you know, that they can execute, that they can, you know, produce points, that they can keep the ball in front of them, that they can do, you know, those types of things. And, and, um, and that's kind of where it starts is that proving yourself that you can do that in a practice situation and then being able to carry that over um, into, you know, in front of fans and and in the in the bright lights and and um, you know I think uh, Callan obviously being a 2,000 point scorer in high school she's obviously uh, been a very I mean and 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 Callan was playing at the largest classification highly competitive against really really good competition and she's a 2,000 point scorer I mean she is she's a confident scorer knows how to put the ball in the basket and so um, it's great to see her playing with 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 great confidence our Woodhouse Auto family hotline Includes our text line, 402-413-2400. Dennis has sent a text, and he says, Amy, if you were given a choice of coaching another women's sport for a day or two, your choice would be, and he's talking about at Nebraska. He, he came back with a second test. So this is at Nebraska. And one other coach to do the same for women's basketball would be. So wanting to know of the Nebraska coaches for one or two days who could come in and then if you were given a choice of coaching another women's sport for a day or two, what would your choice be? <laughs> I love these questions. Yes. Dennis. It's really not a secret. Um, yeah. For me, it would be softball, yeah. and I'd for sure um, – coach that for I love watching them play I become kind of a softball mom just because I have um, a daughter that plays and I enjoy kind of being out at the park and um, and uh, but I think obviously in having Rhonda come over and coach our our team for a day I'd feel comfortable with that because we talk so often that um, we really know a lot about each other's teams and the dynamics and um, you know so I think that seems like a natural answer to that question. Coach Ravel, <laughs> coaching, coaching, you know, uh, switching screens. Yeah. You know, it's a lot like the slide step a shortstop has to make. <laughs> Going in the hole, trying to get the ball, don't you think? I think so. I mean, there's some things, that do, no doubt about it. The more that we talk to each other, the more we kind of learn about um, each other's uh, sports, for sure. I, I love that question, Dennis. Thank you. That was on our Sports Nightly Hotline.
Brought to you by Woodhouse at 402-413-2400. And our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center is sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer. Supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. Huskers uh, coming off that overtime loss in Indiana. You had Michigan at home uh, before that. That uh, was a game in which you got behind a little bit early, but I was really impressed with how your team came back, really made it a game in the second half, your first game without Allison Widener. What what are your thoughts, if you can remember? Because uh, anytime you've played a game, it's hard to remember the game before that. But um, any recollections about coming back against Michigan in that second half? Yeah, I mean, we just we had got off to such a slow start um, in that ball game and, and then dug ourselves uh, too big of a hole. But um, the one thing is we kept fighting. But we know that in this league, you, you have to string together 40 minutes. And sometimes it needs to be 45, like it was in our last ball game. But um, I guess... Sometimes it might have to be 55 if you're playing against Kansas, you know, but in the Big Ten, um, you can't get off to slow starts. You can't have a quarter where you just are, you know, really, and, and that's really tough to overcome in this conference. And so um, we, we learned that, um, not that we didn't already know that, but um, Michigan smacked us in the face with that again, and, and it's a good lesson, and hopefully um, we will um, not see that happen again. Big crowd, uh, over 8,000, and um, I, I had so many people who were, it seems like everybody I know was at, at the game last night. What did you think about the crowd? Oh, my gosh. It was just incredible. It was electric. It was um, obviously over 8,000 fans there. Um, I just... I don't even know know what to say. I mean, it was just amazing feeling um, for our team to, to have that kind of support. Um, but the crowd was, they were so into the game and so into it. It was just pretty special for us. And um, we're, we're incredibly grateful for that support. I always know um, my brethren who uh, broadcast games for the other teams, uh, they're always just telling me how Nebraska has the best atmosphere. They love coming to Pinnacle Bank Arena. I remember Sherry Cole talking about when they used to go to Missouri and they used to struggle with some mediocre Missouri teams. They'd ask her why when she was, you know, when she had Final Four, you know, teams, she said, because there's no energy here. And I think in some ways, I think opposing teams like coming to Pinnacle Bank Arena because it's a real college atmosphere. I mean, you've got you know, you get the band, you get the Scarlets, you get the cheerleaders, you get the fans, and it's always a good game. So it's got to help you in recruiting also if you bring in uh, a player to kind of see that atmosphere, doesn't it? Uh, it absolutely does. It absolutely does. And we're fortunate enough to have some some people to, to experience that crowd. And so I just say thank you uh, once again because that, you know, Husker Nation, just being Husker Nation, it just really, it really helps. That's Amy Williams. I'm Matt Coatney. This is Sports Nightly, Hour 1. Hour 2 will be the Nebraska Men's Basketball Show with Fred Hoiberg. When we return, we'll talk more Husker Women's Basketball. We'll have more of your calls and your text at 402-413-2400. So stay right there. The name on the mailbox may say Smith, Myers, Baumgartner, or Johnson. But when you choose to plant with Rob Seco, it includes your name, too. Making you a stockholder in a company that's invested in you. With the simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, relationships that bring more to the table, the technology, traits, and genetics that take on local conditions, and people with the know-how to use it. And Rob Seco, the only stockholder we listen to is you. Today's play of the day comes from Nebraska. We pick it up with the local sports announcer at a Nebraska lottery retailer. Dave enters the store. He makes a move to the checkout counter. Looks like he's going to pass. Yes, he's passing the clerk a few dollars. The clerk takes the handoff and spins around. It looks like he's placed the scratch tickets on the counter. And now Dave has them in his hand. It's the old scratch -ski. He scratches left. He scratches right. Oh, my. He's done it. Dave has scored a bundle of cash. Play is good. Go play. Odds vary by game. Here's Greasel, deep left corner, Gary's three, got it! Saturday, Husker Hoops doubleheader action begins with pregame coverage on the men's side against Minnesota at 10 a.m. with tip-off at 11 a.m. with Kent Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. On the women's side, pregame coverage with Matt Coatney and Jeff Grish begins at 12.45 p.m. with tip-off at 1 p.m. against Rutgers. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app, Go Big Red. 
Hi, it's Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. And I'm Amy Just from the Lincoln Journal Star. Hey, listen, HuskerExtra.com and the Husker Extra mobile app have the best coverage of Nebraska sports. Our reporting team shares features and analysis of all Husker sports, along with the latest recruiting news and more. Plus, Husker Extra subscribers have access to our exclusive podcast, The Showdown, where we share our latest insights and expectations. Go to HuskerExtra.com or search Husker Extra in your app store. Download and subscribe today. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. SOS, SOS. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota Hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota. The brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, CY 2000 through 2021 sales. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. Buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. We welcome you back to the Nebraska Women's Basketball Radio Show. And I am Matt Coatney with the coach, Amy Williams. You can call or text at 402-413-2400. And let me see here. Uh, Larry in Lincoln uh, presently in Arizona, question for you, Coach. Can you give us an update on Trinity Brady? Haven't seen her at the game for at least several weeks. Um, just wonder if there's an update that you had on, on her situation. Yeah, uh, Trinity's just um, trying to get healthy after um, that uh, hit to the head in the Virginia Tech game. Let me see Brad, who says he's from three question marks. He says this is Papa Brad. Coach and Matt, Happy New Year. The more I watch, the more I love this team. The love and toughness of this team amazes me. We will win and get back on track. What is the most difficult part of coaching for you at this point? Go Big Red. Ah, the most difficult part of coaching? Yeah. Um, it's probably watching um, players like Trinity Brady and Allison Widener, who I know how hard they have worked 
to improve their game, to be out there doing what they love to do, and and um, you know their their dreams are coming true playing you know, basketball for the University of Nebraska and then to kind of have that uh, ripped away in just, in just a, you know, a flash. Yeah. That's really, really hard as a head coach. And, um, you know, when I was a student athlete here at Nebraska, I went through a pretty serious knee injury myself. And at the time, I just could not understand why, you know, that yeah. was happening to me. I, I had, it's no secret. I had spent a couple of years as a 30-30 club member, um, as a student athlete myself. And, and um, I'd finally worked into some significant like playing time as a junior and I was living my dreams and then wham, it's just gone in a second. And um, now that I'm a coach, I know exactly why I went through that as a student athlete uh, because the empathy um, that I have for a uh, young woman that I know has poured their heart and soul into something and then um, and then had it kind of ripped away um, in in just a second splash and and you know it's it's a it's a emotional it's hard and um, uh, probably the hardest thing that I deal with mm. boy that it's got to be hard 402-413-2400 for your calls and texts. Dorothy Lynch, Homestyle and Light and Lean Dressing. Endless flavor abilities. We'll have our final moments with Coach Amy Williams before Coach Fred Hoiberg is on here for Hour 2 of Sports Nightly with the Nebraska Men's Basketball Radio Show. Stay right there. Want to get all the latest Husker news straight to your phone? Need to be the first of your friends to get the scoop on all things Huskers? Sign up for text alerts from Nebraska Athletics. Text Huskers to 83200 to get game time notifications and updates, breaking news, special ticket offers, and more straight to your phone. All the Husker news is just a quick text away. Just text Huskers to 83200. Standard text messaging rates apply and may vary by carrier. Does your business need quick, competitive financing for heavy machinery, trucks, or other equipment? Currency is here to help. Whether you're financing construction equipment, farm equipment, trucks, trailers, or any other big ticket item, Currency will automatically find the best rates. Currency facilitates loans for up to $500,000 with repayment terms up to 72 months. It's fast, easy, and free to use. Visit GoCurrency.com and apply today. More Nebraskans are choosing chiropractic care first. Studies show that chiropractic is safe, drug-free, and the most effective treatment option for back, neck, and joint pain. It can also help patients of all ages reduce migraines, improve mobility, and maximize athletic performance. Keep the entire family healthy and active with natural, cost-effective chiropractic care. Find a chiropractic physician near you at nebraskachiropractic.org. Get your life back with chiropractic. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Here's Greasehold, deep left corner. Gary's three. Got it! Saturday, Husker Hoops doubleheader action begins with pregame coverage on the men's side against Minnesota at 10 a.m. with tip-off at 11 a.m. with Kent Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. On the women's side, pregame coverage with Matt Coatney and Jeff Greach begins at 12.45 p.m. with tip-off at 1 p.m. against Rutgers. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app. Go Big Red. Every single day, Central Valley Ag works with our farmers to feed the globe. When you raise food corn for CVA, you can earn an additional $25,000 per quarter section. That's $100,000 more profit for every four quarters you farm. Do the same work, raise more profit. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Learn how you can get up to a $5,000 signing bonus with a value-added grain contract at cvacoop.com. Central Valley A, the official co-op of Husker Nation. It's been a really good show so far with Coach Amy Williams at Nebraska Women's Basketball Radio Show. I'm Matt Coatney. That's the coach, Amy Williams. Fred Hoiberg will be in here uh, after the top of the hour to talk Nebraska men's basketball, and that'll be great. We've given away four tickets to the Penn State game earlier, so it's been a lot of fun. You're going to take the team to New York City before uh, finally ending up uh, in New Jersey. That sounds like a lot of fun. I, people ask me all the time about what it's like being on the road, and 
um, especially during conference season. It's hard to to do what I would call quote unquote fun things, but you've done a really good job with your team. I know they were able to get a really good bus tour of Washington D.C. when you had some extra days heading to Maryland. Um, uh, how many of your players have never had a chance to see Times Square and maybe maybe uh, New York City? Yeah, I, I really don't know how many have or have not, but uh, I know the girls are almost giddy about just having that um, experience. So um, I'm, I'm thrilled that we can do that. Well, good for you. So you've got uh, Rutgers coming up and then uh, turning around with Penn State on Wednesday night. You're now in what would be the meat grinder of the, the Big Ten schedule. You're in the middle of January. Um, you've got a little bit of time before classes start, but how does how is that going to change your approach to things uh, when once the semester starts? Yeah, I you know I think um, it's we're in a unique situation where our kids, several of them, have started a three week kind of mini semester class, oh, okay. um, and and the fall semester or the spring semester starts a little later than normal for us because of that, um, and so. Uh, there will be a few of them that are already kind of in the routine of at least w one class, um, you know, that they're that they're taking care of business on um, as we're as we're working through this this Big Ten grind. I tell you, somebody who has uh, come back with the Big Ten grind really well is Izzy Bourne. She missed three games. She had the shoulder injury, but man, did she look good against Indiana the other afternoon when we were in Bloomington. She hit that big three. Izzy's capable of hitting threes, but she hit the three-pointer that, you know, I think you and I both thought might have been a game winner. But then she also got a steal down the far sideline, went coast to coast. I don't think of Izzy as a speed burner, but she got kind of up and down the floor there. She's been playing well. Uh, she has. She has. And our team, um, you know, really relies on her. She's just such a steady, consistent um, presence and such a great solid uh, leader for our team and and um, so uh, missing her for a couple of games and then even just having to kind of work her back in after you know she was out for a couple of weeks two weeks you lose two weeks of conditioning in the middle of the season and then came back to play in a triple overtime game and then had four more days uh, away from the team for for the Christmas break. So, you know, really feel like that Michigan game really was kind of almost Izzy's first uh, shot back after about three weeks off. And um, so uh, it'd be great to have her just continuing to to um, get get back her conditioning. And, and um, it was great to see her play so well against Indiana. Talk about parity in the Big Ten. You go on the road, you take fourth-ranked Indiana, two sweet 16s to overtime they're building. Um, you're taking a look at Ohio State. Iowa got beat at Illinois the other day. Illinois, I think, has certainly improved this year. Um, the Big Ten top to bottom, I don't think anybody can look at Rutgers and think, oh, that's a gimme game. That's a tough game. How, how competitive is the Big Ten going to be this year? Yeah, I mean, it is a grind, no doubt about it. And um, Rutgers, very tough to beat at their place. So um, it's going to be hard. Uh, we know every single game is, but we say all the time in our program, we do hard things. So, Amy, I've enjoyed this. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. 1245 Central, Jeff Grease joins me pregame coverage from the rack. I think they're calling it Jersey Mike's Arena. Jersey. That's the rack to me. <laughs> I, can't, I can't change the name of that place for me. Tip off at 1 o'clock on Saturday afternoon. Coming up next, the Nebraska Men's Basketball Radio Hour. Jessica Cootie has uh, joined us in the studio. She'll be joined by Fred Hoiberg to talk men's basketball. After the break, stay right there. up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Agriculture is the economic engine of the Midwest. At Acres Equipment, we dedicate ourselves to making that engine run smoothly. We supply our farmers and ranchers with quality John Deere equipment, parts, and service. We also deliver the most advanced technology and precision ag strategies to help them farm today and for the future. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Sam Pineda with Campus News. 
For the fifth straight year, the University of Nebraska system is a top 100 patent earning institution. NU system researchers were granted 43 patents in 2021, with UNL researchers named as inventors on 25 of these patents. Husker patents include three projects with partners at the University of Nebraska Medical Center and six patents for a surgical robot developed by faculty in the College of Engineering. When you're prepared for life, you get more out of life. When you're prepared, you spend less time worrying and more time doing the things you love. How prepared are you? When you're ready to find out, Emeritus is ready to help. First, we get to know you. Then we make a plan together, one that lets you enjoy today and prepare for tomorrow. That's what we call fulfilling life. Emeritus, insurance, employee benefits, financial services. Triple B Feed has the products to help your cows thrive. Whether it's weekly delivery of consumption-controlled Lumix liquid minerals with protein or Redmond natural mineral salt for livestock or humans, Triple B has you covered. Let Brian and Brad Blahorn take some of the stress out of your beef production this year. For more information and other products, visit TripleBFeed.com. Triple B Feed, helping you and your cattle. <coughs>
This is the Nebraska Men's Basketball Radio Show with head coach Fred Hoiberg. Presented by your Midwest Ford dealers. Visit buyfordnow.com. Greasel popping up to catch it as Walker takes it in on the Kalkbrenner. Scores it. He scores that puppy every time he puts his head down, goes into his chest. Now to Greasel, shoots up a long three. Got it! Big, big, big three! Sam Greasel! Step back three. Ah, no good. Rebound by Walker. He tries to power it up against three defenders and does successfully. A little kiss off the window on the right side of the goal by Walker. That's a man play right there. Derek Walker, two huge offensive rebounds. Puts up another three. This one's on the way. Got it. Got it. Got it. Breidenbach with a big three. Greasel puts his head down, drives again. Puts it up in and again. Sammy, my boy. Huskers can smell it. Across the timeline comes Greasel. Greasel, the floater, the pass, and the touch finish by Walker. Nebraska slicing and dicing the Creighton Blue Jays. Greasel brings it across the timeline. Take that monkey off our backs. The Huskers at the horn, winning this puppy. 10 points, 63 to 53 over Creighton. Here is your host, Jessica Cootie, on the Huskers Radio Network. Hour number two of our double dose of Husker Hoops. I'm Jessica Cooty here for the Nebraska Men's Basketball Show over the next hour and joined by head coach Fred Hoiberg. Well, coach, how's it going? Happy New Year. Yeah. Merry Christmas, all of the above. Same to you, Jessica. How are you? I'm good. good. Excited to be back talking hoops with you guys. Uh, tough one last night. Um, kind of a, not the team that you want to spot and let get ahead of you that much. Kind of hard to get out of a hole that, that big, right? Yeah, you know what? you got to give Michigan State a lot of credit. They came out and hit shots all over the place. And, uh, you know, the first possession, uh, they moved the ball around, and Tyson Walker hits a pretty well-contested shot uh, after going back and watching it by Emmanuel, who is one of the top defenders in the league. And that really got him going. And he was unbelievable in the first half hit mid-range shots. They went 14 for 24 in the mid-range area, and a lot of those were contested shots. It's what you want to give up. The, the, the contrast against Iowa, they were 1 for 16 in the mid-range. When you look at analytics, and that's the world that we live in right now, you try to take away the rim, and you try to take away the three, and uh, you know try to contest those mid-range jump shots as much as you can. That's what the math uh, you know, says and supports, and give them credit. They, they made 14 of the 24 mid-range shots that they took. We've defended Ended the mid-range very well uh, for the most part this year. We had, uh, I believe it was 20 more attempts at the rim uh, than Michigan State and outscored them by 20 in the paint. And generally, if you can do that against a Michigan State team, you're at least going to have a chance to win. Unfortunately, we couldn't make a three, and we really struggled from the free throw line. At one point, we were three for 12, ended up going eight for 20 overall, and really cut the thing down. I think we had it at 12. Uh, with the ball on a couple occasions and we had six and ones in the second half and we only converted one of those after after the basket and again those those haunt you when you go back it could have been a five or six point game and then anything can happen and unfortunately they continued to uh, stay hot as as the game went on and they stretched the lead back up yeah, you had cut it to 12 at one point there in the in the second half and took better care of the basketball, it seems like. Overall, you had to like the fight that, that your team came out with in the second half. Yeah, we did, and, and we were much more efficient. We did a better job. I thought we played a little too fast in the first half. We played in a crowd too much. Some of the turnovers that you just alluded to happened by trying to sp- play in small spaces and split gaps that weren't there. Our movement was great in the second half. We cut it very well. We cut very well off of Derek, and that allowed us to get to the rim, and again, it got us to the free throw line. Unfortunately, like we said earlier, we didn't convert a lot of those, but our movement was much better. It's where it needed to be. It generated some open shots, and again, we need to knock those open ones down when we have those opportunities. Is it something like, too, where you're, you're lined up for a close gimme putt and it's just mental at this point? It's funny you say that. I thought about that a lot. Um, when I'm on the practice screen, I can make 23 footers in a row. <laughs> I get out in the course, and it's just not the same, mm-hmm. you know. And it's it's weird how that happens. Uh, you know, I guess as a player, you know, the way I always looked at it is, you know, I made a living, f- you know, very fortunately playing this game, and there was so much practice put into it behind closed doors and our guys work we work on our free throws i know that'll be a call tonight uh you know we we put a lot of time into it but it's about converting it when you get out there in front of the fans when the lights are on when the popcorn's popping that's the important time to be able to knock those down and repetitions is what gives you uh you know the best opportunity and you know when you're a player you put all those reps in and you remind yourself of that when you're shooting i you know i was a freshman at iowa state 
we were playing Oklahoma State. They were the number two team in the country in the old Big Eight. You know, for fans that remember those old days, it was Byron Houston and Darwin Alexander and Big Country and 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 uh, Corey Williams and Sean Sutton. That was our starting lineup. And I got fouled in overtime. Justice Thigpen, who was a great player, brought us all the way back, made six threes in the second half after being down, I think, 24 points at one point. Going to overtime, the whole team ran at him, coming off a stagger screen. He dumped it down to me, and I got fouled by Byron Houston and made the basket. I just set a record. I'd made 32 in a row, and my streak was broken earlier. So I was getting ready to shoot the free throw. And Eddie Sutton called a timeout, thank God, because my, I was up there, my legs were shaking. <laughs> but that's what it is. That's what pressure does to you when you're out there on the floor. And I remember I went over there on the side. I got a drink of water, and I said to myself, you know, I've shot a million of these over the course of my life. It's a free throw. Get up there and trust your stroke. And I got up there, and I made the free throw. And uh, they came down. Ron Zetcher, the old ref, called a terrible foul <laughs> on Justice. And Darwin Alexander, who was the number one free throw shooter in the league, I think he was an 86% free throw shooter, he got up there and he missed both free throws. And, you know, it's just, it, it's, it's what it does. And it, you have to be able to convert those, I guess, a long-winded answer to your question, Jessica, of, you know, the repetition should allow you to get up there and trust it. Right. And we're going to do some things tomorrow. We've got a sports lab that's connected here to the studio. And I'm going to take some guys over there tomorrow. And there's a what we call force plates that show weight distribution. So I'm going to try to do everything I can. <laughs> you know, I, I, we're shooting them in practice. We're punishing them on misses. Um, you know, we're shooting them all throughout practice. But tomorrow, I'm going to try to get the science involved in it mm -hmm. and get them on the force plate and see if there's something with their weight distribution that they're shifting to a side or, you know, maybe um, you know, one leg is they're favoring more than the other and just try to get as much data now as possible with all these resources that right. we have to see if there's something that we can do just to change it a little bit and hopefully from a mental standpoint, you know, get the guys in the right frame of mind. Dorothy Lynch, home style and light and lean dressing, endless flavorabilities. 402-413-2400 if you want to be a part of the show tonight. You brought that up, the NAPL, and I know you guys are one of the teams that utilize that a lot. Coach Cook does as well with, with volleyball. Uh, how great is it to have that resource? Because not every college program has a, a, a lab like the NAPL. Well, not many NBA programs and, wow. and professional teams have uh, a lab like we do. My son Jack is very fortunate now. He played at Michigan State, played his last year at UT Arlington. He's working for the San Antonio Spurs now, and they are putting in something very similar to what we have in their new facility. And, uh, you know, we're ha our uh, Matt Tomei, who took over for Chris Bach, who went to the Jacksonville Jaguars this last year as the head of the sports science department, um, you know, is having c communication now, uh, you know, with their guy about what we do and how we use the data and how, how we try to uh, get our guys better using those force plates and the different testing that we do with that. So it, it's pretty advanced, you know, and it's a great luxury to have. I think we're the only basketball team in the country that travels with a sports scientist. So yeah, it, it really is great to have to have that, um, you know, and use it how we can. You mentioned the um, points in the paint, outscoring them 40 to 20, and Derek Walker, 15 points, nine rebounds. The Big Ten guys on the uh, call last night, they, one of them was talking about how if he was putting together a team for battle, he'd want to come to Lincoln and pick up Derek Walker because he's just a warrior. And, and the things that he's doing, you shouldn't be doing with his size and, and how outsized he is. Is there ever times that you watch him on film and be like, how, how, how does he do that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, we always talk about Derek's our pressure release. If we have any type of trouble, if we're getting heated up, get him the ball in the middle of the floor and then get movement and that's that was part of the problem in the first half we got it to him where we in kind of a sweet spot but then we stood and watched and you have to keep that movement and then they sat in the gap and and helped off when you're not making shots they can have a little bit extra help in there and force him to kick the ball out but it, you know going back to I think Florida State was his second game back uh, you know from missing some time earlier in the season and Florida State has the 7-4 player and Derek was going right at him right through him right around him and scoring time and time again as they were their perimeter players were denying so it's a great luxury to have a guy like Derek and then you saw that him do the same thing against Zach Eady uh, you know going into his body and that's what Derek does such a good job of is creating contact creating separation and then being able to go up over top with different angles he's he's as good as I've been around I had another kid, George Niang, that had great touch and had really good, uh, you know, different angles on his jump hook. And uh, Derek is is really good at that as well. Who's made a career for himself in the league, too. He's having a great, yeah, I'm really proud of him. He's having an unbelievable year. And, 
yeah, hopefully has a, a great offseason as a free agent this year. Uh, have you is that part of Derek's game that's grown? Has it always been something he's been able to do? Yeah, I think you saw it last year come out a little bit, and he had great efficiency. He was one of the top uh, scorers as far as field goal percentage in the in the nation. It's about almost sixty eight percent. And again, we, when when we're going through a little bit of a drought, Derek's the guy we want to get the ball in his hands. And unfortunately, we just had too long a drought uh, yesterday and had some turnovers. And we missed some shots that we normally make. And Derek was, uh, you know, part of that. I think he was 7 for 13 overall. And, uh, you know, had a night where he probably could have made 10 of those with some of the ones that he missed. But when, yeah, balls in Derek's hands, we feel pretty good. And probably, too, was pretty mad at himself for the free throw line, too. It's one for eight. I mean, he's he's better than that. And I think he he was probably pretty angry with himself at that, too. Well, no, no doubt. And he, you know, he got himself over 70% last year and was very reliable. We felt very comfortable with him when he was on the free throw line, especially late in games. He converted at a very high level. So, you know, he was in there today. We had an off day. We had to by, by NCAA rule. But Derek was one of the guys that came in. He shot 100 free throws. And like I said, we'll get some work with him, and then we'll get him over to the lab and see if we can detect anything you know, from a science perspective. All right, got a couple questions for you. Coach, any prospect of players improving their shooting and scoring? You were so, you were so good at that. Yeah, I, you know, again, we're, we're, we're putting a lot of time into it. I can promise you that. We got guys coming in. You know, I'll just give an example. Emmanuel Bandamel, we, we have a Husker 100 drill that we do where you shoot 100 threes uh, from all the different spots on the floor and, and you get them out of the actions that we have within our, within our system. And the day before the game, he made 82 out of 100. So, you know, it's, it's there. And I met with Emmanuel today. And the thing I talked to him about, his, his misses is where, were where you want them, okay? If, if, when you're missing, when I was shooting the ball well, when I played, my miss was a little bit long. Uh, I always tried to stay off the front of the rim. And at times when I was struggling, that's where my miss was. It was, it was short because you get a little tight. Your, your human nature is you try to get cl as close to the rim as you can, and you don't trust the rhythm of your normal shot with your, with your high uh, follow through and, and, and stick in the landing. So, you know, his misses were just barely long. And I told him, that's a good sign, okay? Your misses is where you want them. Now you just need a night where you, you make a couple and then you've got a completely different feel. The thing he did, he got himself a layup early and now it's getting to the free throw line a little bit. You know, Emmanuel, he's so athletic I and mean, he can get into the basket and cut off of Derek, who's a great passer, and get himself to the free throw line. He hasn't missed a free throw so far in conference play. So if you can get a layup, get a couple free throws, now that makes those shots a lot easier. So, uh, you know, he, again, putting the work in, um, you know, Jawan's misses were a little bit long last night. Again, it's where you want your misses to be. And, uh, you know, CJ had some good looks and Casey had some good looks. And we're going to trust those guys will make those more often than not. So, you know, now it's about going out there. Like I said, we made our early shots against Iowa. And look what it does. It separates. Mm -hmm. It creates uh, confidence in your team. And, you know, again, now it's about becoming more consistent with that and hopefully carrying that on throughout the rest of the year. Going back to Emmanuel, and, and you had mentioned earlier, I mean, he's an elite defender, and he's a lot of times matching up with the opposing team's best player, best guard. How much of a challenge is that, too, when you have such a responsibility on the defensive end to make things work on the offensive end? Yeah, it, it, it is. It, it does take its toll. It wears your legs out a little bit. We have backed his pickup point up a little bit to where he's not up hounding uh, full court. We will have him up. Um, over the course of the game in certain circumstances, but we've tried to back it up a little bit just because we need him on the floor. He makes up with, for so many mistakes out there on the floor. And like I said, it's, it, listen, he shot 35 and 37 percent his last two years at SMU. So he's a very capable shooter. And it's funny how that confidence works. You, you, you have one game where you take the lid off, you make a couple, and it's a completely different feel out there. It's like the weight of the world is lifted mm -hmm. off your shoulders. And he had a shot in the right wing. It was right in front of Michigan State's bench last night where he shot it and he immediately pulled his arms back. And it was, I said to him, I said that, that you could, when you took that shot, you could tell that you had some tightness in your shoulders because if you're just flowing and you shoot the ball and you trust your normal stroke, you have a completely different finish. So, you know, there's those little things that we're trying to, whether you watch on film and then you go work on it on the floor, now it's about carrying it over to show that those things work. And again, his, his misses were better 
um, you know, than, than what they had been uh, a little bit long, and, and that's an easy thing to fix. How much of a luxury is it, though, to have a guy like that that is such an elite defender that you can say, hey, this is your assignment, and you know that he's going to take care of that assignment? Well, and the other thing about it is, I mean, he's going to have an impact on the game, whether he's making shots or not. Mm -hmm. And that's that's been uh, true. I think there was one game he had two points and four rebounds, and you could argue he was the best player on the floor just because of the impact that he had on the defensive end. Did, were you that kind of defender? No. No, I did not have that same impact if I wasn't making shots. If I wasn't making shots, I was sitting on a bench. Yeah, you were straight to the bench. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's hilarious. All right, going to work in our first break here on our Nebraska Men's Basketball Show. 402-413-2400 if you want to be a part of the show. The Sports Highly Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of the 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned. You can always find what you're looking for with Woodhouse. Back with more with Coach Hoiberg coming up right after this. Hey, honey. Hey, Mom. How did Jordan's interview go? I'm not sure. Your brother isn't home yet. Oh, one sec. Someone's at the door. Are you Mrs. Lewis? Yes. Mrs. Lewis, I'm Officer Taylor. Your, your son was in a crash and has died. What? He wasn't wearing his seatbelt and was ejected from the vehicle. No. No. Someone <laughs> is counting on you to buckle up. Brought to you by NDOT Highway Safety Office. Get ready again for some Nebraska farm facts. When there's work to be done, Nebraska soybeans are on the job in many of your everyday products. In fact, Nebraska soybeans are hard at work in Goodyear tires, Ford cars and trucks, Skecher shoes, asphalt, fuels, lubricants, name brand paints and stains, and more. Soybeans are an innovative replacement for petroleum, leading to more sustainable products all over the world. This message is brought to you by Nebraska Soybean Farmers. Growing opportunity from the ground up. In America, the future belongs to everyone. So we designed the Ford trucks of the future for everyone. Ford F-Series, America's best-selling trucks for 45 years straight. Made for performance and capability on and off-road. Because the trucks of the future aren't designed for a few. They're built for America. Ford F-Series. Drive one today. Based on 1977 to 2021 calendar year total sales. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exist to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. It's harvest special time, and you can save $3 per foot or $3,900 per quarter mile system now on a TNL pivot system. Pivots worked long hours this season battling dry weather to save top dollar corn and soybean crops. But did your pivots work like no other? If not, it's time to invest in a reliable, safe, low maintenance TNL irrigation system. Hydrostatic drives move these durable workhorses continuously across fields. So get an irrigation system that works as hard as you do. Contact TNL Irrigation, your local TNL dealer, or visit us online at TLIRR.com. TNL Irrigation Systems like no other. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska exists to be there with you. They are rooting for the schools and teachers who make our communities great. That's why Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Nebraska is proud to sponsor Touchdowns for Teachers and ask Husker fans to nominate outstanding educators who help Nebraska students reach their potential. If there's a teacher you want to recognize for the impact they've made in your community, find a nomination form at huskers.com slash touchdowns for teachers. Agriculture is the economic engine of the Midwest. At Acres Equipment, we dedicate ourselves to making that engine run smoothly. We supply our farmers and ranchers with quality John Deere equipment, parts, and service. We also deliver the most advanced technology and precision ag strategies to help them farm today and for the future. Acres Equipment, solutions for every field. Bank of the West is offering the first checking account designed for climate action. It gives back 1% of the account's net revenue to the planet at no cost to you. Shows you the estimated carbon impact of debit card purchases. 
and there's no minimum balance required. Learn more at bankofthewest.com slash 1%. Additional conditions apply. Member FDIC. Every single day, Central Valley Ag works with our farmers to feed the globe. When you raise food corn for CVA, you can earn an additional $25,000 per quarter section. That's $100,000 more profit for every four quarters you farm. Do the same work, raise more profit. Our planet is hungry. Together, we feed it. Learn how you can get up to a $5,000 signing bonus with a value-added grain contract at cvacoop.com. Central Valley Ag, the official co-op of Husker Nation. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska is proud to support Husker Athletics. Having a competent teammate beside you makes all the difference when it comes to protecting what matters most. With a proven track record of dependable coverage, unmatched financial strength, and a prompt claim service team right here in Nebraska, that's insurance kept local. Visit FMNE.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Since 1993, Dakota Mac has offered fixed long-term ag real estate loans perfect for any stage of life. The rebellious 15-year loan, the here for laundry 20-year loan, and the 30-year loan who thinks they can tell you a thing or two about parenting. Whatever your needs, trust Dakota Mac with your legacy. Hi, it's Nick Reno from Dakota Mac. Please call me at 308-380-7564 to learn all about our competitive rates on ag real estate loans. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more. Acres, solutions for every field. As we welcome you back to our Nebraska men's basketball show, I'm Jessica Cootie, joined by Fred Hoiberg. And we got a text and a call for you. Sam in Omaha wants to know what are the first two things coach looks at on the stat sheet, field goal percentage and turnovers, or does it vary game to game? Yeah, I mean, the big thing last night I was looking at was transition points and rebounds. That Those were the two things that we had on the board on our game plan was those are the two things we had to do if we had any chance of winning. And the first half, I thought they got out on us, behind us. A lot of that was off of turnovers. When, when you turn the ball over or if they block a shot, uh, it's hard to get back, but you still have to react. You got to get back. Um, first ball on the floor, we wanted to be, uh, you know, first opportunity to get to win, to win that 50 50 battle. They got it. They dove on the floor first, and that sets the tone a lot of times. Uh, but transition, uh, they got too many in the first half. Second half, they got one basket. We did a much better job of getting back. The, the glass was an issue all night. We did not have the physicality that we normally play with on the glass. And when you play against a Tom Izzo team, in East Lansing, if you don't play with physicality, uh, you know you're you're going to get embarrassed. So, um, you know, again, I, for for a big part of that game, I, when I went back and watched it, the first half, uh, you know, where they made a lot of those shots, it's what you're kind of willing to give up as, as long as you're contesting, which we did contest a lot of those. Um, but the transition, uh, that's an effort thing. It's a want to thing, and the rebounding, you have to be able to compete on the glass, which we have. We've been much better uh, this year on the boards, and, uh, you know, if you win the glass, a lot of times you win the game, and we got, uh, I think, got rebounded by 17 last night. All right, got a phone call for you now. Let's head out to West Point. Husker Dan, how you doing? Good, Jessica and Fred. Happy New Year. Yeah, same to you, Dan. Hey, Fred, I just love where you're taking this team, and it's so much fun watching them. I've got two questions. Sure. Okay. How much do you emphasize using the square on the glass on layups and bunny shots? Yeah, uh, you know, we, we do talk about that a lot when we work on our finishing drills, uh, you know, especially our bigs. We talk about getting that thing high off the square in the different shots that we work on. And, you know, even though analytics, you know, a big part of it is, is taking away mid-range and floaters, we still do work on that. Our first shooting drill every day are mid-range shots, and then we work our way back uh, to where we go off the dribble, and then, and then we end up shooting threes. Uh, it's the first thing we do every day. And then we do finishing drills as well, and we talk about getting it up on the top where the square, uh, you know, where, where it meets on that, if you're a right-handed player on the right side of the floor, uh, shooting it high off that square. So, yeah, we, we do talk about that, um, you know, with our guys a lot. Okay. Well, and my second question is, and I don't know if this is legit or not, but do you know, like, what is the percentage of using that uh, 
that square behind the rim. You know, as far as uh, what the actual percentage is when, when you hit, I, I don't have that. We just have the overall numbers. And again, when you look at what we've done this year, we, we are manufacturing quite a bit of our uh, uh, baskets in the paint at the rim, and, and that's where you want. Obviously, we are not shooting the ball well, and we're, we're right at 30 or just a hair under 30% after last night. And, you know, that has to If we want to win, we got to change that. But, you know, as long as we keep getting that thing in the paint, we took 16 threes, which is a very low three-point percentage rate in today's game with analytics, with the numbers in where they are, and we only made two of them. So, you know, you have to try to get that thing to the basket as much as possible. The other thing, we got to the free throw line 20 times, and obviously we all, we all know how that went. Uh, we had been 73% since the Creighton game, so we were shooting the ball better from the free throw line. We were trending in the right direction uh, but obviously took a big step back in that area last night so you know from an analytics standpoint the, the most high percentage shot uh, is the uncontested rim attempt then the uncontested three uh, you know and the free throw is, is in that as well as far as the top three shots that you want to uh, that you want to get to and you want to manufacture so you know the system tries to dictate that we have an open lane right now that's where Derek's getting a lot of his baskets is where Sam uh, backs down his defender quite a bit and again I thought we rushed into that a little bit too much last night uh, but again if we can outscore teams in the paint the way we did last night uh, hopefully we'll have a chance to win a lot of those games all right Dan thank you coach thank Great. you Dan Appreciate thanks for calling call. in Dan all right um, so we have to talk about that Iowa win where does that rank that def defensive performance rank among any team that you've coached in your career? Yeah, it, it certainly was one of the better defensive efforts that, that I've been a part of, especially against a team that's as high octane offensively as Iowa is. That's a top 10 offensive team. And then you throw the Purdue game. Purdue's number one in the nation in offensive efficiency. So uh, you hold those two teams uh, you know, to where we did and the percentages that they shot, uh, you know, those are two of the better defensive performances that I've, that I've been a part of. And it, the way we flew around, Jessica, out of the double teams and the rotations, how crisp we were and if there was an open guy we were flying at him running him off having the next guy help and continuing the rotation throughout the possession and rebounded the ball well uh, for the most part in those games as well so you know two of the better uh, defensive performances I've been a part of and, and again that's what this team is really bought into that's what I've been proud of is uh, you know when you struggle to score offensively we generally have given ourselves a chance to win because of our defense uh, and that was certainly the case in those two games how about the atmosphere Atmosphere has been incredible. We, we really appreciate it. Uh, you know, you know how important it is to protect your home court and then find a way to steal some games on the road. When I look back at last year and you f close out the season, when at Penn State, you went at Wisconsin, you went at Ohio State, uh, one top 10 team, another one I think it was 15th, and then a very talented Penn State team. Uh, if you protect your home court, you're playing in the postseason. We didn't do that a year ago. So, you know, we appreciate all the support that we're getting right now. And I've talked a lot about this since we put this group together that I did think it would be a fun group to get behind and a group that you can really pull for because of how hard they play and, and what they do every day as far as a competitive spirit. And we're going to continue to do that. And I think if we do, the people, uh, our fans, will continue to come out and watch and support. And, and that's what it's all about. Especially if you beat Iowa, right? I mean, <laughs> you, you have a double rivalry with Iowa. Well, right? Yeah, I, you know, when you grow up in Ames, listen, that's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's a big one. And, you know, I was very fortunate as a player to have great success in that series. Uh, you know, we lost one game my sophomore year, and it was as painful loss as I had as a player. Uh, but, you know, thankful to get those other three wins. And then as a coach at Iowa State, it's great to play in, that, uh, play in the rivalry and coach in that rivalry. I don't know if you'll answer this question, but you talked to Kent Pavelka last night in your pregame show about how much Tom Izzo meant to you because your son played for him. Yep. So um, I would be curious to hear what, who, what coaches in college basketball would you rank among guys that you would want your sons to play for? Because that's the ultimate compliment, right? Sure, sure. Yeah, Izzo's up there at the top. And just from the experience that my son Jack had there and what he's doing now, Jack is working for the San Antonio Spurs and uh, he's just, he's doing awesome. And I got a message from one of their assistant coaches the other day, just let me know how great of a job Jack's doing. And he learned that work ethic playing for Tom Izzo. And and just everything that he's uh, that he instilled in him as far as toughness, uh, leadership, and you know, I we went down to pick Jack up, my wife and I, and, and we went uh, and had uh, had had 
coffee with uh, Coach Izzo and his wife, and um, you know, he he just we just sat and talked about Jack, and I talked about you know just thanking him of everything that he did, and he thanked me back saying, "Listen, Jack did more for me than I'll ever do for him." And wow. to hear that, I mean, that that's pretty special for a guy that's a hall, first ballot Hall of Famer, uh, you know, to say, and you know, it just. Uh, again, I, I can't thank him enough for everything that he did for Jack, and you know, you know I'll, I'll be thankful to him for the rest of my life. Got any runner-ups or any other guys that? You oh put on yeah, list? there's there's a there's a lot of them. Uh, there's a lot of them out there um, that, uh, that that I'd love my kids to play for, and I guess they've played for well three. Jack played for a guy named Greg Young, who was terrific as well. He was great for Jack. Uh, and then my other kid didn't go too far <laughs> from home. So we'll see how that one ends up. Okay, I also wanted to ask you about Jamarcus Lawrence because he's a guy we're seeing more and more minutes. How much has he earned that in, in practice that's translating to games and, and you giving him that opportunity? Yeah, he, he's, 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 been, he's been awesome. And, you know, the one thing that he struggled a little bit with, he had a big three against Iowa. And, you know, that's the, the thing that he really... Uh, uh, was reliable on in his high school was was his three point shot. What he's really done, I think, surprised all of us is his defense. Mm -hmm. And he gives you another guy that can defend on the ball and that can move a manual off the ball a little bit and give him a break and save his legs a little bit as the game goes on. So I've, I've been really pleased with Jamarcus and his toughness and, and how just how quickly he has learned our concepts because it's a heck of an adjustment. When you go from college, or sorry, from high school to college, uh, it's so many different types of, it's a different game almost because of the different coverages that you have on the floor, especially the way we play, keeping the ball on the side and, and that generally gets you into rotation and you have to be crisp with that and sharp. And he's been spot on with all that. And then the other guy's Denham. I thought Denham gave us really good minutes last night in the second half and was a big part of that run that we made. Had a big uh, basket driving the slot to the basket and then made some big plays on the defensive end. Defense a lot of times is not something that freshmen, true freshmen, pick up quickly like that, right? It, it's why a lot of them don't have a big impact. I mean, certainly the special ones that just have that incredible talent, those guys, you know, they get in the floor and they have an immediate impact. But for a lot of us, you know, you have to grasp that quickly or else you're not going to have a chance to get on the floor. And, and that's where Jamarcus has really uh, grown as the season has gone on. And again, yeah, I trust Jamarcus out there on the floor because I know he's going to be in the right spot. All right, got to take another break here on our Nebraska men's basketball show. The Sports Nightly Hotline is brought to you by Woodhouse, where you can shop your way from one of 16 convenient locations or online at woodhouse.com. Anytime with 18 brands and a huge selection of pre-owned, you can always find what you're looking for at Woodhouse. Back with more with Coach coming up right after this. Experience the difference at Woodhouse Buick GMC. From the GMC Acadia to the Buick Encore, we're sure to have a vehicle that fits your lifestyle. Our climate-controlled showroom guarantees a comfortable shopping experience every time you visit. Plus, our commitment to our customers continues well beyond the date of purchase. You will leave our lot feeling comfortable and confident in your new vehicle. Start your car buying journey today, in-store or online at WoodhouseBuickGMC.com. We are professional grade. They say consistency is the key to success. They weren't wrong. So how about grabbing a beer that's consistently smooth, consistently refreshing, and consistently light? You might just find that the road to success can be pretty enjoyable. Michelob Ultra, the perfect balance of taste and refreshment in only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Anheuser-Busch Michelob Ultra Light Beer, St. Louis, Missouri. From the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, I'm journalism student Sam Pineda with Campus News. UNL has been awarded over $14 million by the U.S. Department of Commerce to expand robotics research and teaching spaces, part of a $25 million award given to the state of Nebraska to advance robotics research. The funding will allow the university to educate and train the next generation of Nebraska workers, entrepreneurs, and innovators for careers of the future. Greatness doesn't happen overnight. It takes time, focus, and dedication. At Shelter Insurance, we understand that because we put in the hard work and dedication for decades. And that commitment has paid off with award-winning customer service for your auto, home, and life insurance. 
Visit shelterinsurance.com and find an agent to help you choose the coverage you need. Shelter Insurance. We're your shield. We are your shelter. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. Dear gas prices, go take a hike. Toyota is the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. The Toyota hybrid lineup brings efficiency with power, savings with style, and top-notch tech to keep you connected. Not to mention plush premium interiors and the most advanced Toyota safety features. So, now you know who you're talking to. Toyota, the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years. Toyota, the brand with a hybrid or electric vehicle for every driver. Toyota, the brand that helps save you money at the pump. Now, let me ask you a question, dear gas prices. You really think you can stand in the way of the number one retail brand for electrified vehicles for 22 years? <laughs> Think again. Toyota Hybrids. Find yours at Toyota.com. Toyota, let's go places. Based on manufacturer estimates, see why 2000 through 2021 sales. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. Beardmore Subaru celebrates Nebraska volleyball again this season. Five national championships, 47 All-Americans, and a home sellout streak dating back to 2001. The longest streak for any women's sport in NCAA history. Beardmore Subaru has been a proud supporter of Husker volleyball for more than 10 years. Beardmore Subaru in Bellevue has the new Subaru Outback Wilderness. Loaded with off-road ready upgrades and the new Solterra, Subaru's first ever all-electric and all-wheel drive vehicle. Go Big Red. Hi, it's Sam McEwen from the Omaha World Herald. And I'm Amy Just from the Lincoln Journal Star. Hey, listen, HuskerExtra.com and the Husker Extra mobile app have the best coverage of Nebraska sports. Our reporting team shares features and analysis of all Husker sports, along with the latest recruiting news and more. Plus, Husker Extra subscribers have access to our exclusive podcast, The Showdown, where we share our latest insights and expectations. Go to HuskerExtra.com or search Husker Extra in your app store. Download and subscribe today. Celebrating 50 years in the commercial real estate development industry in Omaha and nationwide, Noddle Companies is proud to continue its tradition of supporting Husker athletics. Check out what's new in Omaha, which includes revolving recreation and the food hall at Zone 6 in Exarban Village. Another exciting project coming soon are the Blackstone Urban Row townhomes. Noddle Companies, creating long-term value through community development. For more information, visit noddlecompanies.com. Go Big Red. First Interstate Bank, built for you. Learn more at www.firstinterstatebank.com. Member FDIC. Welcome back to our Nebraska Men's Basketball Show. Jessica Cootie, here with Fred Hoiberg. Final segment with the coach. we got an interview coming up with Wilhelm Breidenbach. i got to ask you about the emoji game. You've stepped up your emoji game, gotten involved <laughs> in the action with Coach Rule. That's yeah. taking Twitter by storm. Well, yeah, and I, I don't... I, I'm really kind of off social media, so I don't look at it much, but I just thought, why not? I, we were going into the break, and it was our last non-conference game, and I, and I did see Coach Rule. I, I kind of follow and see what he's got going, and I had no idea what he was talking about, so I just decided, why not throw one out there? And he was, I think, one of the first to respond to it. So. He told us. He was on our signing day show right after that. He was pumped that you got in on the action. So Yeah, I think it might have been a one and done, though, Jessica. <laughs> All right, uh, last question for you. At Minnesota, 11 a.m. Saturday on the road, uh, what's the key to getting a win on the road there at Minnesota? Yeah, they played very well last night and ended up losing that game by three. And very talented. Uh, Battle is one of the top scorers in our league. Dawson Garcia is a really tough cover at the five spot, very versatile, can make shots, and they've got uh, good guard play. So uh, I have to go out there. It's an early start. Those early starts is very important to get off to a fast, uh, to a fast start. And if we can do that, uh, and play with more physicality and just stay together, play through runs better than we did last night, then we'll have a chance. All right, Coach, uh, appreciate your time. Got to get um, to another break because we got Wilhelm Breidenbach coming up, and we have a, a 
pretty good discussion on Taylor you Swift. You going to talk Taylor Swift? Yes, we do yeah, talk you always, Taylor Swift. You always Swift. know when Will Helms in the gym because you hear Taylor Swift blaring over the loudspeaker. You're a, you're a Swifty or you're a T-Swift like fan, her. right? I like her. All Not right. as much as Will Helms, but I like her. <laughs> I don't know if very many people like him as much as Will Helm, but. For sure. All right, uh, so coming up right after the break, we're going to hear from Will Helm Breidenbach. Buckle up and put the phone down. A reminder from the NDOT Highway Safety Office. Touchdown, Nebraska! If you're doing business in Nebraska, the best way to connect your organization with the excitement surrounding the Huskers is through a partnership with Nebraska Athletics. You can take your business to the next level by reaching loyal Husker fans through in venue signage, digital and social media, radio advertising, and more. Got it! Join the Husker team today and email partners at huskers.com to learn more about opportunities to connect with Husker Nation. That's partners at huskers.com. While some seed companies put a greater stake in stock prices and anonymous shareholders, Rob Seco knows that what's important to you hits closer to home. That's why you'll find we're focused on your needs. With a simplicity that makes us easy to do business with, a relationship that makes it easy to connect with anyone in the company, and the technology, traits, and genetics you need from any source. Put your stock in the company that puts you first. Rob Seco. Here's Greasel, deep left corner, Gary's three, got it! Saturday, Husker Hoops doubleheader action begins with pregame coverage on the men's side against Minnesota at 10 a.m. with tip-off at 11 a.m. with Kent Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. On the women's side, pregame coverage with Matt Coatney and Jeff Grish begins at 12.45 p.m. with tip-off at 1 p.m. against Rutgers. Tune into your local affiliate or at Huskers.com or by using the Huskers mobile app, Go Big Red. Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. As the Huskers head to halftime, Frank is off the couch and headed for the fridge. Ooh, but he can't make it because he is so cold. The furnace is out again. SOS, he screams, and calls SOS Heating and Cooling, his favorite Luxair dealer trusted since 1950. With Luxair, you get a free 10-year labor warranty with a new system. SOS Heating and Cooling. SOS to the rescue. There is no place like Nebraska, and there is no place that treats you like your home like Sap Brothers. For over 50 years, Sap Brothers has fueled America's heartland and has been a reliable partner to local farms, businesses, and Huskers fans across Nebraska, providing the highest quality fuel, lubricants, and propane, servicing your farming equipment, and welcoming guests into our travel centers. Visit www.sapbros.net. Sap Brothers is proud to be an official partner of Huskers Athletics. Welcome back inside our Huskers Radio Network Broadcast Center, sponsored by Acres, the Midwest premier John Deere dealer, supplying the equipment and service to advance agriculture and much more Acres solutions for every field. So welcome you back to our final segment here of our Nebraska men's basketball show. Wilhelm Breidenbach playing some really good basketball right now. Coach uh, Hoiberg really bragged on him during the second half of the Iowa game, and he's been in double figures the past two road games. So we thought we chat with Wilhelm about how his game has progressed and, oh, yeah, a little T-Swift as well. Here's Wilhelm Breidenbach. All right, well, Wilhelm, I know you guys got back uh, late night traveling back. Uh, you, uh, Michigan State really got off to a big lead there in the first half, but then you guys fought back in the second half and, and really played some good basketball there in, in the second half. What were some of the big takeaways from this team coming off that loss last night? Um... I think just that it's important for us to get out to a good start is is a big one. Um, they kind of stepped on us early, and we played hard in the second half, but it didn't. It was too too little, too late. So I think just um, yeah, getting getting out to good starts, not taking any, anything for granted, and just following the game plan from start to finish. Well, you've uh, played some good basketball here as of late. Had a great game against Kansas State. Coach Hoiberg really bragged on you about uh, your effort in the Iowa win. And then, uh, again, double figures again last night. What's, what's clicking for you here as of late? Um, I just like, like to try to play hard. That's really all it is. And then every, everything else comes with that. So just play hard. Try to, help, try to help, help the team win however I can. And whether that's scoring or rebounding or what, anything in between, just whatever I can do to help the team win. Where does that come from? Where does where was that instilled in you? Um, I mean, that's just kind of how how I've always been. I've always been just 
I want to win regardless of what that means for, for me personally. I think that's just how I grew up playing sports, whatever, whatever it was. What about, too, just, just coming off the injury? They always say that, yeah, you can fill in shape, but getting back into full game shape, it takes, you know, sometimes it can take a year. Do you kind of just now feel like you're, you're back to 100% completely, completely yourself coming off the injury? Um, I mean, there's, there, there's always setbacks. I mean, it's not perfect from the, from the jump, so there's always aches and pains, things you didn't really think about, things you can't really train for. Um, that you have to kind of deal with. So I'm still just kind of getting back into it. And, I mean, I'm going to play hard regardless of, of where my body's at or any, anything like that. So, yeah. You did get a taste of college basketball last year, but you did not play any Big Ten games, right? What's it been like playing Big Ten for the first time, and especially going on the road? Uh, yeah, it, it's been good. I, I played two Big Ten games last year, so not, not too many. But, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's been good. The environments are great. Obviously, the – Every single team we play is really, really good. They're really competitive. So it's, it's, been, it's been a good experience so far. How do you guys as a team approach, and I know everybody has to do it when you play in the Big Ten, and that's a lot of times the reason why players come to play at Nebraska and, and t uh, places in the Big Ten is because it's arguably the best basketball conference in America or one of. But how do you approach that grind of knowing, all right, we're playing some of the best teams in the country every time we take the floor? Um... I mean, we just take it day by day. I mean, you, you can only control one day at a time, one moment at a time. So we just kind of listen to the coaches. The coaches are really good about putting a, a game plan together and scouting the other teams. And it's just you take it day by day, try to win each day, try to get better every every practice or every time you get on the court. <laughs> Well, there's no doubt about it. I mean, it's been said over and over again. Uh, this team is, is it's a defensive mentality. It's what it's based off, what you guys do on the defensive end. What's that been a, uh, like for you to be a part of that, uh, this team that's, it's, it starts on the defensive end? Um, it's, been, it's been nice just because, obviously, you have to play defense, too. It's not all about scoring. So it, it's been good to kind of have that, that focus and have guys who, who like playing defense, like playing hard. So we just got to keep piecing it together and keep keep doing that for 40 minutes. I mean, and what's the buy-in like for an entire team to know, like, hey, everybody has got to bring it, and, you know, if one player doesn't do their job, then it all can fall apart. So to have everybody buy into that, uh, what's that like, and, and how, what's been your perspective on that? Um, I mean, that's just kind of who we are. It's kind of all of us are kind of the same mind. We're, we're all one team, so it's just kind of, it's really nice kind of having everybody on the same page, everybody with the same goal. Um, so, yeah. Without Blaze out, and I know this has been something, even dating back to last year, your freshman year, you were called on to play the five some when Derek Walker was out. Um, how confident do you feel in playing whatever role this team might call you in, whether three, four, five, whatever it might be? Um, I'm pretty confident. I mean, I'll, I'll do whatever is asked of me. Uh, what, wherever I'm needed is, is what I'll do and what that's the position I'll play. I'll play as hard as I can. So it's, I'm good with whatever. How have you gotten to that point where you are a versatile player that they can call upon you for different roles? Uh, just doing what the coaches ask of me. Just like, um, obviously we have, we have a, a pretty deep team. So if what I, what I can't get in practice for reps, I'll go watch film with the coaches um, just watch Derek, watch Ole, guys like that. Just watch what they do um, during practice and during games and just um, kind of get get a feel for it, get some mental reps when I can't get the on-the-court reps. You, you, you said it earlier about you play so hard, and that is never anything that people are going to have to question with you. You're always going to bring your effort. But sometimes it's maybe a little too hard. You, you pick up some fouls. How do you balance that of playing hard and being aggressive, but then also not getting in foul trouble and not fouling when, you know, it, the team doesn't need you to foul at that time? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's certainly a, a learning curve and something that I have to obviously work on. Um, just kind of, yeah, get playing a little too hard, you know, hip checking people by accident, stuff like that, kind of getting silly fouls just on loose balls and stuff like that. I just have to, I just have to be smarter, and that's something that that's my fault and my fault only and something I have to fix. So.
It's probably something you're going to fill up more and more as you, you know, again, um, you know, playing in this league. And the more you get out there, right, you just get a better feel for it and what the refs are looking for and, and how they're going to call certain games, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's every, every game's a learning experience, and I'll, I'll, I'll make mistakes, and I just try to focus on limiting those and learning from the mistakes that I made so I hopefully don't make them again. Well, on tonight's show, we, we talk about Michigan State, but I have to ask you about the Iowa win. How fun was that one to be a part of? Yeah, it was. It was. It was really fun. It's always good to good to win games and play play together as a team, um, and win win as a team. But we gotta, yeah, look on, on the next one and focus on stringing them together. Coach Hoiberg talked from the very beginning of the importance. You guys have to be better at, at protecting Pinnacle Bank Arena. How much do you guys emphasize that? How much? How important is that every time that you step on the court here inside PBA? Yeah, it's it's really important. I mean, having so many fans come out, having such a great environment this year, and everybody's everybody's supporting us. I mean, it's really important to us to to play hard and kind of protect home court. What has it been like playing in front of these crowds? It, it's been pretty rocking. It's been a couple, a couple of the end place, or a couple of the games I've been to have been the loudest I've ever heard PBA in the two years that I've been here. Yeah, I mean it, it's been really, uh, really fun. I mean, yeah, the environment's great. People are loud. People are screaming. So it's we love the support. We appreciate it, and it it, it definitely gives us a little added energy. All right, well, I cannot let you get out of here without asking you about Taylor Swift. How did you become a Swifty? Uh, just kind of during quarantine, I think, just when she came out with her first uh, Taylor's version, the Fearless one, I was listening to it, and I really liked it, and then listening to more of her music, and it just kind of sprung from that, I would say. I, I, I tell people, like, the other day I went in to do an interview, and you were – working out on your own and you were on your playlist over the speakers jamming out to, to Taylor Swift. Is that a, yeah. that's on your playlist, your, your uh, workout playlist? Yeah, that's, that's just about all, all I listen to. She's about the only, the only person I listen to. So yeah. Uh, I love it. I'm a huge Swifty myself. I love Taylor Swift. What's your favorite song? Uh, my favorite song, probably Wonderland. I think that's my favorite from 1989. Okay, and then uh, we've also had this debate too. Since the Garth Brooks concert, we've talked about how uh, certain which artists could potentially sell out Memorial Stadium. And I have said all along that I think Taylor Swift would be the number one choice of who potentially could sell out Memorial Stadium as a musical act. You have to agree with me on that one, right? I have to. I've been saying that from the jump. It's got to be Taylor Swift. She's the only answer. I, I'm with you. All right. We'll start the petition. Uh, Jessica Cootie, okay. Wilhelm Bryden, Box starting the petition to bring Taylor Swift to Memorial Stadium. All right, Wilhelm, appreciate your time. Uh, best of luck this weekend. Yeah, thank you. And that is Wilhelm Breidenbach, the, uh, one of Taylor Swift's number one fans. She's got a lot of those number one fans, but he's been playing some good basketballs of late. Again, uh, Coach Hoiberg said after the Iowa win that Wilhelm in the second half was as good as anybody on the floor for us. He's been in double figures the last two road games. 10 points uh, last night and then 13 points at Kansas State. So um, hopefully more good things to come from Wilhelm Breidenbach. Nebraska 811 says, go dig red before you dig. Always click or call 811 to have your utility lines marked. It's free. It's easy. It's the law. Andrew Dowdy been uh, running the show for us back there. He's singing a little T-Swift love story back there. So maybe we can get him on the mic uh, to sing for us. We have some karaoke. All right. That's going to wrap up this hour here on our Nebraska Vince basketball show. Next up, next game at Minnesota, 11 a.m. on Saturday. And we will have the call for you right here on the Huskers radio network with Kent Pavelka and Jake Muleheising. Muleheisen starting at 10 a.m with the pregame show so tune into that coming up 10 a.m saturday with 11 a.m tip and here coach hoiberg mentioned it er earlier minnesota 0-3 in big 10 play but had a really good fight against wisconsin in madison last night lost 63 to 60 and always tough to play on the road in this conference all right thanks so much to listening for the at the, listening to the nebraska mids basketball show i'm jessica hootie thanks to andrew dowdy coach hoiberg and wilhelm brian buck have a great night husker nation
Hit us up on the text line. Text 402-413-2400 with your Husker thoughts. At Nebraska, our people will always be our greatest asset. Day by day, donors give our teams the best opportunity to compete and win through their generous donations. Our vision for the future is ambitious and requires help from those who want to see Husker athletics excel at the highest level. Go big and join thousands of other Huskers Athletic Fund members with your gift today at huskers.com slash donate. It's more powerful than the legendary Husker option offense. More powerful than the black shirt defense. It's the sun, and you can harness its power with JTEC Solar. JTEC, the official solar energy experts of the Huskers, can help you shrink your energy bills and start saving money now. Solar power is clean, affordable, and it's dependable because the sun always shines on the Huskers. JTEC Solar for your home, business, or agriculture energy needs. Visit JTECSolar.com. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska is proud to support Husker Athletics. Having a competent teammate beside you makes all the difference when it comes to protecting what matters most. With a proven track record of dependable coverage, unmatched financial strength, and a prompt claim service team right here in Nebraska, that's insurance kept local. Visit FMNE.com to contact an agent for a quote today. Farmers Mutual of Nebraska, always alongside you. Here's Greasel, deep left corner, Gary's three, got it! Saturday, Husker Hoops doubleheader action begins with pregame coverage on the men's side against Minnesota at 10 a.m. with tip-off at 11 a.m. with Ken Pavelka and Jake Muehlheisen. On the women's side, pregame coverage with Matt Coatney and Jeff Grish begins at 12.45 p.m. with tip-off at 1 p.m. against Rutgers. Tune into your